Hello! So the Oscar nominations have been announced. Um, a few weeks ago I did a video about the Golden Globes and uh, the Critics' Choice Awards. And also the SAGs have been given out this past week, weekend. Gary Oldman won for Darkest Hour, which I'm glad. Out of everybody, that's who, who I wanted to win. Though I'm pretty sure you already knew that. Uh, but, yeah, I uh, have a... Uh, I actually have... to have up the nominations. Uh, and, obviously, the two things I'm going to talk about are what, Christopher or Dunkirk and Darkest Hour. Because those were two, my two favorite movies of the last year. Um, so uh, it's nominated for best. Those two films are nominated for best picture. But Dunkirk, for the first time ever in Christopher Nolan's career, has now been not. He has been nominated for best director. Uh, his direction on Inception wasn't good enough. As, direction on any of the Batman films, particularly the last two, were not good enough. So for the first time, he is nominated for Best Director, which is good for him. And, um, yeah, Gary Oldman nominated for Best Actor. For me, the only uh, things I'm disappointed with, really, is, uh, No supporting actress for Darkest Hour. Um, you know, Kristen Scott Thomas, I thought was good, should have been nominated. I like to have seen her win, but she hasn't been nominated in anything except for the BAFTAs, which have yet to even come uh, or have been uh, given out. Uh, I think it's fairly uh, safe to say that at this point in time, like, um, that uh, Gary Oldman is at least going to be the person to win the Oscar. And I think mer makeup could win. I think that's a very good uh, distinction, and I uh, think, yeah, yeah, those two are a lock. I would, I would have liked it if. Uh, Kenneth Brenna and or um, Mark Rylance were nominated for supporting actor. Um, though between the two, uh, I kind of would have wanted Kenneth Brenna to win. Even if it's just for the fact that uh, I do like Kenneth Brenna. I think he's a talented per uh, actor and director and writer and all that. But he's a very good actor. And I think, and he doesn't have an Oscar, and I would well, like to just see him have an Oscar. Uh, though Mark Rylance was really good. Uh, so if he was nominated, whether with or without Brenna being nominated, and he won, I'd have no problem with that, uh, honestly. But aside from picture and director, uh, see him. Do, 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 do. Original score. Hans Zimmer's nominated for that film, for Dunkirk. It is nominated also for sound editing and sound mixing, uh, production design, cinematography, film editing. And yeah, that's, that's eight Oscars. So there's that, and I sure I wish you know, as I've said, I wish Darkest Hour could have been nominated for like supporting actress for. No, I'm sorry for shaking the thing, but I um I wish she was nominated. Uh, Kristen Scott Thomas was nominated as well. I love it if those two won Oscars. Would have liked it if Brenna and or uh, Rylance were nominated for Dunkirk. Because out of everyone, those were the two 
aside from the lead actor, Finn Whitehead, uh, really stood out. I mean, I love Tom Hardy, I love Kenneth Branagh, I love all of them, and quite honestly, all of the people in the film of Dunkirk. But those two in particular were really, really stood out to me. Um, aside of Finn Whitehead, they, you could say, those had the, those two had the most to really work with, um, at least in terms of big names. I mean, Harry Styles was very good as well. Um, uh, and also, who was that dude? And your name, Bernard. I think I just screwed up that name. But, you know, Gibson and Dunkirk. But, uh, he was amazing, too. Many people have things to work with, and um, but just in terms of, I think it's also they were very subtle as well in their performances. Uh, Rylance and uh, Brenna were very subtle, and sometimes the most subtle are some of the best. Um, Gary Oldman was very subtle, I mean, he was nominated for Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy, and this performance is. He's not really subtle. I mean, he's, he's the personality is, and he's very, you could say, larger than life, but like Winston Churchill was. Though you could also say that's kind of a, that might not be accurate, but, uh, you know, hey. Uh, yeah, Shape of Water is nominated for 13 Oscars. Still haven't seen it. Woody Harrelson is, for the first time, nominated for any real big award that I've at least noticed for three billboards, billboards outside of Ibbing, Missouri billboards, or whatever that is, along with Sam Rockwell, though I think Rockwell will probably win, just as I think Oldman will win. It looks like uh, Frances McDormand will win, because uh, she's won a bunch of awards. Um, Sorsha Ronan, Lady Bird, I don't know, I, there was something that I kind of thought she could win, just because, you know, she's been nominated a few times, and yeah, she's young, but, you know, hey, it's kind of like, I guess, why not give it to her, she hasn't won, though Margot Robbie as Tanya Harding and I, Tanya. She looks like she did a very good job. Um, yeah, I don't believe Daniel Day-Lewis will win for Phantom Thread. Or Timothy Shemelot? Shemelot? I don't. Daniel Kalua, Denzel Washington. I'm not sure if they'll win. I think it'll be open. I screwed up some of those names. I apologize. Jay Blige for Mudbound is nominated for an Oscar. Allison Janney, Cry Tanya, Leslie Meneville, Phantom Thread, Laurie Metcalf, Lady Bird, and uh, Octavia Spencer for Shape of Water. I think Allison Janney will probably win for Right Tanya just from how, again, all the awards have been going. Uh, and Laurie Metcalf is the first Roseanne act actor or actress to be nominated for an Oscar. Quite frankly, I would have thought John Goodman would have been nominated for an Oscar before any of anyone else. Um, not that Madcap's a bad actress, but you you see all the roles uh, that Goodman has done. It just seemed like he would have at some point, if not won an Oscar, have been nominated. But kind of, I am fairly shocked and surprised that he has not, but hey. Um, and another thing I want to talk about here uh, has to do with comic book films. Now, one of the biggest celebrated comic book films of last year was Wonder Woman. People enjoyed that film. I did. I thought it was very good. You know, People say outside of the Dark Knight trilogy, it's one of the best DC has to offer. And I would, I could, I'd say, yeah, I agree with that. Um, especially as of late. 
you know, it's like the Dark Knight trilogy is on top. And then it's, you know, whatever your preference, the Wonder Woman I could see being up there. Um, but people are upset because it didn't get any Oscar nominations. And um, honestly, when thinking back and watching it, uh, outside of, like, costume design, I didn't really see a whole lot um, for it to be nominated. Uh, sounds like Gal Gadot should have been nominated for an Oscar. And while she was very good in that movie, and uh, her character got obviously rightly fleshed out, though it's a movie about one Roman, so you'd have to flesh the character out. Uh, I don't know. Compared to these... While I haven't seen these movies, the performances that some of these from the trailers and stuff that I've seen, you know, I can see why they're nominated and I have no from it or problem with the nominations, honestly, uh, actually. And as good as Gal Gadot is and was in Wonder Woman, um, I think perhaps have to, uh, just wait and see what she does, not just as Wonder Woman, but later on uh, in her career. As now, you know, Wonder Woman's giving her a very big boost, and she, you know, has more uh, role like than the film being received as it was. You're going to get, you know, uh, a lot more offers given to you, so... Perhaps she will be nominated for an Oscar, and perhaps if she is, she could win, depending on the role and film. The stars line just right. It could happen for her, and if so, good. But, um, yeah, I, I didn't really f see, aside from like costumes, and perhaps effects. I could see effects also being a you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> a very good uh, contender there, uh, maybe. But custom design, definitely I could see a nomination there. Um, but I bring this up because Logan is nominated for the Academy Award for Best Adapted Screenplay. The first time said the uh, a comic book film or a film based on comic book characters and materials um, has ever been nominated. You know, as well revered as the Dark Knight trilogy was, it was never nominated for any other huge awards outside of supporting actor, which it won for Heath Ledger. I've talked about this. I believe that I thought you know. I thought Christian Bale could have been nominated and won. I would have liked to have seen him won for The Dark Knight for Best Actor. would have liked to have seen The Dark Knight been nominated for Picture and Director and Score and other awards. And he wins it, win them. Yeah. I would have liked to have even seen uh, Dark Knight Rises nominated for similar said awards that I've listed and won some. Of those awards. I mean, I thought The Dark Knight Rises is one of the best ever in that trilogy of films. It's one of the best in that, just in general, I thought it was one of the best films of 2007. It was, or 2012, I think in last year, I said 2017, but it came out 2007, but I thinking last year, but you know, I thought 2012, that, like that was my favorite film of the year. I thought it was the best. Others can disagree, and that's fine. But, you know, uh, Nolan's Batman films were very, very solid. And Logan was such a fantastic and solid film that I had no qualms with this decision of nominating it. Uh,
Okay, yeah, so the Disaster Artist is nominated for the Academy Award for Adapted Screenplay, but for some reason it's not listed here. Look at House. Uh, I don't know, for some reason it's. They don't have that nominated up here. And this is Wikipedia also, so. But still, Wikipedia is very good at, at least the listings of said award nominations and, and then what later wins. So I don't know what's up with that. But, um. Yeah, the Disaster Artist, which I love, that's nominated for uh, adapted screenplay. James Franco, not for actor. Though with the recent uh, development of accusations against him, that seemed to have uh, put a hole there, unfortunately. Um, I guess he would have taken the place of Denzel Washington, perhaps, because some of those awards, the big awards, like... I didn't see Washington nominated for like Roman J. Ezra Esquire. Let me just see right here. Uh, Golden Globe and SAG and then Oscar. Yeah, it wasn't nominated for the Gold, uh, Critics' Choice Award nor the BAFTA, so yeah. I was thinking it wasn't, but nominated for um, some of the other big awards. So I think that's who replaced Franco's very good potential uh, nomination, but which is sad, and I don't know, the fact that the person who started tweeting all this stuff out during the Golden Globes then deleted them uh, has me very, uh, has me very skeptical on the whole situation, it makes me think it didn't happen, but for some reason they wanted to just write something out, not because it happened, but because uh, Hollywood is um, very much trying to, you know, get, uh, try to somehow rectify this whole us rape and assault uh, that have that have been going on over the years like with Harvey Weinstein and all and then Kevin Spacey also harassing and stuff of you know, men you know there, there's so much stuff that they're trying to rectify so somebody could have just jumped on that bag, right? bandwagon saw James Franco and then all of a sudden started writing stuff out, whether or not they, that this person ever even encountered uh, James Franco, for all we know, never met him, never had, uh, was ever, ever in the same room, like at a restaurant or anything, though we just don't know, but it just seems like because they deleted the t tweets, like, oh, I've said too much, you could have just left it there, like, you just tweeted out a bunch of stuff, and then when people ask you about it, instead of elaborating, you just delete your tweets. That's just kind of, you know, it's kind of weird and odd and suspicious to me. But whatever. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the fact that Logan is, again, kind of trying to get back on topic, but that kind of threw me because I remember seeing Disaster Artist nominated for an Oscar. And, um, I just want to see one quick thing. Yep, that IMDb says it's not for an Oscar, so I don't know what this is all about. With the, you know, uh, whole, uh, Wikipedia thing, but oh well. Um,
but yeah, I. Uh, but I think that the fact that Logan is nominated for a huge major award, like adapted screenplay, when the last big major award that wasn't technical for a superhero, or comic book film, or a film inspired in or based on such material has ever been nominated for an Oscar. That wasn't technical. And I think that's a good sign that uh, those who are fans of comic book films, those who enjoy them or whatever, but also, and you know, the fact that they're, it's getting bigger um, now, that kind of genre of films are now getting a bigger, um, uh, are being honored now more with this kind of thing. Um, I think that's a good sign. They're being more, they're not just being a bit snobbish now. You know, it's not best picture. Uh, though people want a dark night to be for picture and director. At least nominated, if it didn't win, nomination at the very least didn't happen. But, you know, the fact that this, uh, Logan's nominated for uh, adapted screenplay is, is, I feel, a good sign for those comic book films, superhero films, whatever, that go above and beyond. Uh, there's the normal trope that one thinks of those type of films, like the Dark Knight trilogy has done in Logan. Um, and regarding the whole Wonder Woman thing one more time, with it not being nominated, uh, some have said, like, well, you live in a world where Suicide Squad has an Oscar, but Wonder Woman had, couldn't get nominated. And I see the point. It won like an Oscar for makeup and hair. And while, you know, it was very good for the kind of like the makeup and hair for like Harley Quinn and I guess some of the other characters were very, very good. But uh, yeah, you could say another film on that. That. <clears throat> Another film that um, was nominated on side of Suicide Squad was more deserving. Um, but the Oscars, you know, they are what they are. It's you either love their decisions or you hate their decisions or you're just indifferent. And I'm essentially more just indifferent because, well, like, Gary Oldman and Dunkirk are nominated for awards and Oscars and stuff. Still, like, Dunkirk doesn't have supporting actor Oscar nominations. Darkest Hour doesn't have an Oscar nomination for supporting actress. And other things, and James Franco's omitted from actor. And, you know, it's just one of those things that it's like, wow. It just makes you stretch your hair, like, some of the decisions you agree with, but then there's others that you're just like, Really? That's an interesting choice to put in. Um, but yeah, uh, that's really all I've got to say on the matter here. Uh, otherwise, I might just go on rambling and whatever. And we don't want that. I've kind of done that a few times on this kind of on these kind of videos. So, in my 24 minutes, I've made my point pretty much and uh, yeah I have some happiness and excitement um, and uh, yeah and there's some disappointment I do also hope that the Oscars will actually give Dunkirk something I again I feel it was the best film of the year last year it's my favorite movie of the year Darkest Hour is a close second. Those are so good. They're like companion pieces, as people have said, and I agree. I just want both of those films to do well at the award shows, but, you know, me saying that, it, you could say, well, that just jinxes it, or whatever. No. The Oscars have their kind of picks and favorites anyway. There's not a whole lot. I, or you, can say, or do to have any influence over these decisions to be made. I uh, 
have my personal picks and favorites, as I guess you all do too. Whether or not I'm for the biggest film award of the year or not is an entirely different story. But I hope those two films do well. I would like them to. I feel they deserve to do well. I'd like to see Nolan win Best Director in Picture. But The Shape of Water seems like to be the film of the year, which I still haven't seen. I'll probably get it on Blu-ray and DVD or something. But I don't know. From what I've seen in the trailers and commercials, and what I've seen other people who kind of like non-spoiler reviews, uh, what I've heard and seen hasn't really impressed me much to go out in the theater to pay money to see it. But perhaps it is a very good movie. That's always a possibility. Um, I wasn't huge with Birdman, though. I think I've uh, said that before. I just didn't think it was really that great. Aside from Emma Stone and uh, Zach Galifianakis, there wasn't really anything to me that was fantastic about that film. Uh, again, that's just me. If you enjoyed that film, great. I wasn't particularly fond of it. Um, but, you know, Star Wars lost Best Picture to Annie Hall. And Annie Hall was just not very good, in my opinion. I thought it was boring. I saw, I've seen some people say, boring's not a good argument or good criticism. It's just lazy. Like, well, when a movie is about to put me to sleep, that's boring. I, literally, that's how I was with Annie Hall. I gave it a fair chance. I watched it. It was on TV. No commercials or nothing. It was like on TCM or something. I watched it because I'm like, there's a pattern of uh, awards or Oscars where like, one flew of the Cuckoo's Nest won Best Picture over Jaws. I thought Jaws was better, but Cuckoo's Nest was very good, so I have no problem with that. Rocky won Best Picture over uh, Taxi Driver which I thought was the best film of that year, but Rocky was good, so I have no problem there. And before Cuckoo's Nest, Godfather 2 won Best uh, Picture. The Sting won Best Picture over American Graffiti, which I thought was the best film of 73, but again, no real problem. Sting was very, The Sting was very good. And, um, yeah, with uh, Annie Hall, I was hoping of a similar pattern. Might not have been my choice. You know, clearly I love Star Wars. I thought that was the best film of 77. But if Annie Hall was good, then great. But it was Woody Allen whining and complaining about his how his relationship didn't turn out very well. I'm like, well, it's obvious why. You're a neurotic dude who just sh can't shut up. He has to know everything. That's gonna drive people away. Drove your girlfriend away. Not surprised. And it was a, a dreadful experience for me. Though again, if you enjoyed Annie Hall, fine, good. Then again, I'm not a Woody Allen fan, so that probably could have had some something to do with that. But again, this is just one of those things like where you have certain preferences of what you'd like to see win, and then what acts, what the result is. I'd like to see Dunkirk win Best Picture and Director, but it could be The Shape of Water. But the Oscars are, you don't know with them, honestly. You could think one way, because everything aligns a certain way or whatever. Or to like the Academy's liking, and yet they choose something else entirely different. Uh, but yeah, I think with the acting, I think I f have a very good feeling that like all those who have won the big awards so far for the acting in the acting department will probably win. I, I feel very certain that will happen. I hope Gary Oldman wins, um, and I hope. Darkest Hour and Dunkirk do well overall. Want Nolan to win an Oscar. Um, really. 
I just do. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm biased. I enjoy Nolan's films. I like all of his movies. I don't think he's made a bad film. And you could say, oh, you're a fanboy. Well, sometimes there are people who just love everything a certain person has made. There are people who love every Tarantino movie. Suck at this. Really? Tarantino? Some people love every Tarantino film. Some people, there's a movie or two they're not that fond of. But the way no one makes his movies, I'm never bored. I'm never uninterested. They always keep me entertained, and that's important. And if Dunkirk that was one of the most tension filled films I have ever seen, and um, that was a very well made film and I want it to win as many awards as it can. If that jinxes it, well, other people I'm sure have said similar uh, things about the situation if they think Dunkirk's the best film of the year. So uh, I'm like, you know, quite honestly, I, me saying this can't make anything worse. I'm not part of the Academy. I well, sure will never be part of the Academy. And I, in a way, I don't want to be a part of the Academy because it's like, well, I wanted so-and-so to be nominated, but they didn't get nominated. I wanted this film to be nominated, but it didn't. And then you vote, and then it's like, eh, your pick might not win. Well, okay, I've gone on longer than I thought I would, but anyway, uh, that's just my thoughts on the Oscar nominations that have been announced, so, yeah. Alrighty then. See you all next time.